So good evening, everybody. Um, oh, just get myself into my drawing board here. <clears throat> I hope you're all okay. Um, and just see if I can get my live stream up on my phone so I can see any particular questions. I couldn't get it up last week on my phone, so I'm hoping that I'll be able to. Yes, I think so. There we go. Brilliant. So hopefully you can all um, you can all see what I'm doing here. Oh, and I know that we've got sound because I can hear it on my um, <laughs> I can hear it on my phone. <coughs> so excellent stuff. Now I'm tonight going to be drawing or I'm, I thought I've been drawing this commission of uh, Casper and um, I got quite a lot of um, people who are interested in seeing how I did the tongue um, and I kind of chickened out I have to say and I did the I drew the tongue on fate well I didn't draw it live um, so <laughs> um, and um, I thought tonight you know what I'll, I'll come and I'll just I'll I'll reproduce it if I can. So I've got it. It's bit. It's obviously much bigger um, than I would do a normal commission. Um, I've done a very, 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 as you can see here, my usual rubbish outline. <coughs> and um, yeah, I just thought I'd talk you through how I um, work on uh, something like this and do the tongue. So uh, what I'm going to do first off is. I'm going to use my black. Now I'm going to work on this and then I've also got, I'll just show you very quickly, I've also got this that people ask me if I'd, I'd kind of show as well. So these are um, the three eyes that I drew consecutively. Well, I haven't drawn them completely. They've, they've, they're, they're very basic. They need an awful lot wor more work doing to them, but um, on three different surfaces. So I kind of um, did them all at the same time, a little bit here, then a bit here, then a bit here, and then back to this one and kind of went round. I did this for my art club. Um, and I thought I'd just come in and kind of explain the different surfaces as well very quickly at the end. So without further ado, <coughs> um, I'm going to make a start on the, uh, the tongue area. Now, what I what I quite like to do is, uh, if you're drawing along, I'm just going to start with a, a black polychromos, um, and I'm just going to bring in a little bit of dark in here. I like to kind of bring in just that little bit of darkness, just to give me a bit of form, um, and to it'll help me decide how light I need to go with a with a piece, or how dark I need to go with a piece. So I'm just going to bring in this little bit of dark in here. Now, this is on pastel matte board that I'm working on here. It's white pastel matte board. So it's um, <clears throat> this one is quite smooth. Um, you do get pastel matte, some pastel matte that ends up being quite gritty. This one is really quite smooth. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to just gently bring in just a little bit of darkness in there. I'm not overly bothered about having it. Um, particularly even <clears throat> because what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make it really really dark in a second so I'm just going to bring in that black there so I hope everybody's had a nice day um, I've had a I've had a really bonkers day um, again I had a really bonkers day well I've had a really bonkers week actually um, this is that that there is not quite right Needs to come in there a little bit. Um, in fact, it needs to come quite a bit. This just goes to show how all dreadful my line drawings are. Um, and I'm just going to bring in that bit there as well. So I'm hoping to finish Casper's portrait tonight. I've got so far as doing his collar. Um, and um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use very little tiny strokes. Um, and I'm just going to fill this black area in. All I'm going to do, I'm just going to use black for this. I'm not going to use any other colour in here. But I just want to give that a really dark look in there quite quickly. So there we go. Yeah, I'm spending, honestly, today, well, I've had a bit of a tidy up in my studio. I got completely fed up. I bought a new printer and um, <laughs> tried to set it up last night. And uh, I couldn't set it up and I couldn't get the printer inks to work or anything like that. So I got really 
I got really cross with it and I said right that's it I'm gonna send it back it's broken um, and uh, anyway my, my daughter came and sorted it for me and it's not that I'm not technically minded because I am actually quite technically minded I think I, I think I was maybe having a bit of a um, a lack of sleep strop but anyway so uh, but then I wanted everything plugged in uh, into my uh, computer and um, all of the wires were everywhere and it was just like a complete and utter muddle of wires so I've just unplugged everything and started again so that's kind of what I've been doing today so I'm going to do exactly the same here and I'm just going to add in some dark here just so that I not all the way down but just like a this is very very dark down this edge of the tongue here so I'm just going to bring in that dark bit just to there and I'm just going to bring in a little bit of this dark down here as well now the piece that I'm using here let's just quickly measure it for you um it's nine oops nine inches by yeah by nine by ten this piece is so it's quite um quite uh it's just like a sort of square bit but the the uh, the image inside is quite large much larger than you would normally draw a tongue but i thought you know what let's uh, let's do it a little bit bigger and then you can kind of see what's going on so i'm just going to bring the black in here as well um, there we go and then just down here as well so we kind of know where that um, the edge of the dog's mouth is now I'm not saying you know just use black in these dark bits you know if you're going to do this as a commission you probably want to put in maybe um, some blue or some red behind here so you get a really really nice deep black but I'm not going to bother with this um, and then what I'm now going to do now if you don't have this particular pencil actually it doesn't matter um, I'm just going to kind of just get rid of those just a little bit so we can kind of just see them <clears throat> now this tongue is a funny tongue because when you look at it as it stands here it's it's sort of like quite a quite a round shape um, and what we've got to try and do is we've got to try and um, whoever looks at it they need to they need to see that this bit of the tongue is rising up over the tooth that we can't see and this bit of the tongue here is rising up over the bit of the tooth here um, and if we don't get the right shading in it's just going to look like a flat round thing so that's what we're going to kind of be working towards um, and I'm going to use this one which is the rose pink which is a studio one and the reason I'm using the studio is and I'm just going to start to just whack that color in there the reason i'm using the studio is that it's quite nice to work over the top of on the pastel mat so using the studio as an initial uh, as an initial layer is um it gives you quite a nice uh, smooth base to work on now i'm not using light pre i'm not using hard pressure i'm using very light pressure and i'm just not being particularly careful but I'm not leaving any really crazy texture or anything in there. I'm just sort of bringing that, bringing that color in and it's quite light. Now, if you don't have the studio, I would recommend you use what used to be light flesh and what now is, that's a, that's a, yeah, I think it's called beige red, red beige, something like that, the polychromos. Um, I'd recommend you just use that um, or you could use the granite rose um, and I'm just going to bring that all in just as a, an initial layer all over the tongue bit scribbly but you know it's pastel mat so we're okay and just in this area here as well now the thing to remember when we're doing something like this is it's going to look fairly shocking for a little while and when I say it's going to look fairly shocking, it honestly is going to look fairly shocking. It is going to look like um, a, a three-year-old has done it. Let's, well, I mean, you know, a five-year-old's done it, but I think it's more like a three-year-old's done this one. It is going to be um, look pretty grim. Um, so now what I'm going to do is just get the black again. So I'm just going to come around the bottom edge here very just very very carefully and gently just so we have an edge and the darkness in here 
that we can work towards. Now, you'll notice when I'm working on the pastel mat, and this is actually something that I noticed on the art club on Tuesday, that I um, sometimes you don't realise what techniques you're using. Sometimes you just kind of go, blah, 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 off you go, drawing away. And sometimes you don't actually realise um, what it is that you're doing. Um, or you don't kind of take notice about what it is that you're doing. Um, what I tend to do when I'm drawing sort of um, a straightish line or I'm trying to kind of bring in like um, an edge to something on pastel mat, I'll use this sort of backwards and forwards stroke. And I don't use that when I'm using other, um, when I'm using the other types of paper. Uh, so that, I, I, that was quite an interesting thing to... Um, to see really you know as I was kind of working working through and I'm just gonna just take that black up there a little bit so we've got a definite edge to the tongue there and if going backwards and forwards here it means that I don't have to use really hard pressure but I can just get that nice darkness in there um, and the next thing we're going to do is take the um, I think it's going to be the light purple pink I mean, to be honest, it doesn't really, um, Caroline, the ref for the Spaniel is attached to the, to the first live draw that I did. And it's a, um, it's a Dropbox link and you go into that link and the reference is there. Um, so yeah, so it doesn't really matter what colors you pick. Um, some dog tongues are very light, um, almost orangey. Some dog tongues are, are sort of really, really blue, almost almost purple um you know and um and some dog tongues have got like loads and loads and loads of lines and ridges and stuff like that on them um i tend to not not put in a huge amount of detail into my tongues um you know sort of like ridge wise i just think it looks a bit it can look a bit odd if if you don't get it absolutely spot on um, obviously if a dog has got a characteristic tongue and it's got a lot of ridges and everything in there well then you know yeah absolutely we need to kind of get that in but um, you know if you're just drawing um, uh, yeah I, mm, I, I, I tend to try not to get all of those ridgy, ridgy bits in um, so I'm just coming down here again I'm trying to use really really light pressure and of course when we get this purple pink this light purple pink in it looks like crazy and you know when you've spent I don't know however many hours doing the rest of the dog or the, you know the eyes and the top of the head and the nose and everything then you come to the tongue and it looks like this your first instinct is to to cry really um <laughs> it's it's like oh my god what on earth have I done this tongue looks absolutely horrific um but you've you've got to kind of see through it you've got to sort of um almost visualize how it's going to look when you start to add all of the other um colors in there and of course you can't you can't build depth and you can't build all of the color and everything until you've actually got all of the color down so you know when you're when you're sitting here sort of you know weeping over your pastel mat about how dreadful your tongue looks just remember that just remember that no do you know what i've got to put all of this color in um you know i have to put all of this color in because otherwise how on earth am i going to get the depth of this tongue and this this tongue is dark this is a dark tongue and if you just whacked in a load of dark to begin with whacked in a load of black and everything to begin with i mean it's gonna to be honest i don't really need to go up there with the with the pink um, but it, it's it, it, you're not going to get that lovely feeling and that lovely smoothness and everything. It's just not going to happen. Right. So I'm going to bring the dark indigo in now. Um, and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of bring in a tiny little bit of this line here. Um, and I'm going to use the this is the middle middle purple pink. I know I don't know any of these names really because I don't I don't use a lot of the pinks, but um, and then I'm going to kind of go over the top of the, the dark indigo and that um, middle purple pink and just bring that down here. Now, because it's pastel matte, we don't need to be that worried about um, the light bits because I'm going to come and do my usual um, trickery and um, coming and taking all of the pigment back out again um, in a second. So again, obviously this is a big tongue. I should have maybe done it a little bit smaller. 
<laughs> but uh, yeah, this is a big, big old tongue. So um, it's going to take just a little while to kind of um, fill it all. And you see, you'll get to this point and you'll just, it, it's just like, well, how on earth, you know, can this end up being uh, tongue-like? But it, it, once you get those first few layers in, it's 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 quite quick then how it um, starts to come to life. And, you, you know, you may end up spending a, a fair while, um, you know, working on it, but uh, you will start to see tongue-like qualities appearing um, pretty soon and you can also see where the pastel mat starts to change as well if you can hear any shouting and screaming from the other room it's my daughter but, um, she's got Nelly in there sounds like they're playing playing games in there little Nelly she oh she is being such a good girl we went and had her weighed today um, so we took her to um, Pets Corner and uh, we had her weighed and she was 6'2", I think, 6.2 6 kilos when she arrived with us a couple of weeks ago. And she's now 9'2". So she is, she's putting on weight well. Um, and she's a little angel. So, and her and Vinny, oh my goodness, her and Vinny, they, they really play. <laughs> and it's quite scary, actually. I have to say, it, is, it isn't quite scary. It's really scary. Um, watching, watching a dog as big as Vincent playing with little little Nelly but he's very gentle so I've got my putty eraser now um, and what I'm doing is I'm just gonna um, tentatively lift out a few of the little highlighty areas and you don't need to do this you know it's not it's this if you miss this this bit out it doesn't really matter but what I like to do is I like to bring the these little bits of highlights out because it gives me um, a better idea of the form of the tongue. It starts to make it look a little bit more 3D very early on. You know, rather than kind of waiting a while and sort of building everything up, if I can get these highlighty bits in and make it look a little bit um, 3D, it's going to... Um, it's going to look better for me and it's going to compute with my brain a little bit better. Um, you know, and I, I always need to make things look as... I go on about this all of the time, you know, as attractive as possible because that then helps me sort of carry on. You know, I don't lose interest. Not that I, not that I lose interest particularly, but, you know, it's, it's nice to work on something that actually looks like what it is that you're drawing rather than battling along with, um, you know, something that looks pretty grim. Oh, yes, Stephanie, she's she's really settling well, bless her. She's ever such a good girl. So she's she's sleeping. Um, I'm kind of back to kind of back to my normal going to bed at midnight, getting up at sort of half six. So we're sort of back to that. There's a couple of times where she's been up at half sort of half five, five o'clock, which had been, a, you know, a bit awful. But, um, um, you know, I just come down and start my day early, right? But basically, but uh, yeah, she's settling in really, really well. So um, and she's again, she's bright as a button, um, you know, well, all, I mean, all of them are. Vinny, Vinny finds it hard to sort of do sitting. He does. He does sit and he's a bright boy, but he um, when he sits down, he moves backwards. So you tell him to sit and he has to kind of walk backwards about five foot before he sits down. So he, can't, he tends to sit in a different room when you ask him to sit. It's quite funny. Um, uh, Susan, I have been uh, live streaming for 17 minutes. Um, so, right, okay. So next thing, so we've got, got that kind of basic there with the tongue. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually bring in a bit of the, um, the cold grey one. Now, the cold grey one is a fab pencil. Now, I need to find out where my... Oh, I've got it in here the secret weapon in this one is my oops my white prisma I need to get that in there so the cold gray one is a really good pencil actually for tongues because what it does is um it will kind of blend and it will make all of those pinky bits a little bit bluer so you've got all of that bright pink in there but then when you bring the light gray um you know of the uh, of the cold gray one in over the top it starts to make it a little bit blue based. So you get that nice sort of um, light purpley pink. 
um, which is, you know, it, it's it's quite nice really. So all I'm doing here is I'm just lightly running it over the top of the um, those two layers of the pink. And don't worry if there's any sort of marks in there or anything like this, because this is really, really early days, um, you know, so far. Uh, and I'm just going to basically trying to get a smooth ish base. Um, you know, doesn't matter if you think, oh, blimey, that should have been pinker because we can just come in and make it pinker. It's not that's not an issue. We're just trying to get a smooth base. In fact, I might just zoom in a little bit more so that you can so, um, so I think you'd be able to see that a little bit better uh, how the how the pastel mats um, working and how it's you know, how you, you, the grain is kind of disappearing when you start to put this um, the cold grey one in there uh, how do I decide whether to use pastel matte or drafting film? Uh, a lot of the time, if I've been using one surface, then the natural in inclination is to use that surface again on the next piece. Um, you know, and it kind of makes sense because you've been using those techniques and it's much easier to just sort of jump onto another that's like that. Um, I might have a really, really, really textured piece, a little bit like the Pine Martin that um, I think I showed you last week. Uh, that is kind of a no-brainer to do on the drafting film because of all of the texture and everything. And it would take me an, an awful lot longer on the pastel mat. So doing that on the drafting film is, is you know, something that I would definitely do. Um, if I was going to do something quite smooth, so, um, you know, if I was doing a horse with tack and it had a shiny nose band and all of that type of stuff, I prefer to use pastel mat for that type of thing. Um... And I think anything with texture, really, I really like the film, um, you know, and anything that's sort of smoother or uh, I like the I like the pastel mat. Uh, so I'm going to come into this side as well. Again, it's still looking pretty grim, um, you know, but we've got still got quite a long way to go with uh, how we're going to be building it up. And it's at this point where I'm thinking, oh, my God, I hope this works. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then I have to say to myself no nope, you do you know just keep layering it's this is what it looks like um so uh, so we're just doing these roundy strokes again we can bring all of the different colors and everything in you know once we've sort of worked on this this layering and it's not it's not that important um you know to get all of your strokes even and everything uh, on something like this you you want to try and get an even surface but um you know it's i think it's much much more forgiving so if i was doing this tongue on drafting film i'd be having to be really really careful now i'd be having to make sure that all of my pencil strokes kind of lined up you know i was getting a really smooth lay down right from the start Whereas with pastel mat, I can kind of, it's, it's very forgiving and I can kind of just sort of, if, if something goes a little bit wonky or grainy, I can just work in over the top of it. That's not an issue. Good. Right. OK. Um, are you using any pressure really at all or just letting the weight of the pencil? So what pressure am I using? I am using, I'd say I'm using a, a relatively light pressure let's just have a look so if i was using really light pressure i bring my scabby hand in i don't know if you can see that oh god it is a scabby hand that comes from having puppies um that that there is really light and the pressure i'm using for the burnishing is like that um oh i've left the mucky marks now all over it's a good job it's not commission eh? so that's the only thing with puppies isn't it you know they they have such sharp blooming teeth and um I mean, she does. She's not really a biter, but they really do <laughs> grab on. Um, oh, that's sweet of you, Deborah. Uh, I thought I may have converted you to smooth paper. No, Sue. <laughs> no, sorry, no. Um, right. So this is the um, Faber Castell Dark Indigo. Now this is a. Um, I use the Dark Indigo in 
the majority of my portraits for all sorts of things and I'm going to use this pencil now to, to start to bring in some of the shadow in the dog's tongue. Now you will hear everybody going on about tonal values. Tonal values are so important. To me um, they are more important than colour and um, more important than fine details and everything really. If you don't have your tonal values in correctly, then it, it's not going to look, it's going to look wrong. Um, you know, it's either going to look too light um, or, you know, too dark if you've gone, or if you've gone too far the other way. So really, really looking at your tonal values. Um, and on a piece like this, it's quite difficult really because, you know, you've got a pink tongue and then you're thinking, hang on a second, I've got to use blue, really? Um, but if you look at the um, the colours in this tongue, it re they really are some very bluey parts. So the blue is a much better colour to bring in than the, than using black all the way down there. You can use some black as well over the top, but the blue is a really, really good one to bring in. So I'm just sort of lightly bringing this blue in and you can see it's going over the top of the, um, the other two layers, two layers, three layers very nicely. Um, with a piece like this, you might find you are adding quite a few layers. Um, you know, there might be areas like the edge of the tongue where you've only got one or two. There might be areas in the middle of the tongue where, you know, you may have 20 odd layers. Um, spaniels. Uh, yes, I can do the spaniel's nose. Um, I can do the spaniel's nose next week um, if you'd like me to. Uh, the, the thing, so the spaniel, I'd really like to do the ear, um, you know, live, but I didn't want people to get completely bored when we were just doing exactly the same thing every, every week. And I know you're all so sweet and say, oh, no, you never get bored or anything. But I think if we were just hour after hour, week after week, just drawing a spaniel's ear, uh, I mean, I think I'd get bored, to be honest. So, yes, I'll do the spaniel's nose next week. We'll do a little bit more hair around it, maybe some hair on the face that's a little bit shorter. And then hopefully you'll then have all of the information you need to be able to finish your, your spaniel. And then each week I'd like to kind of do something a little bit smaller so that we can finish it within an hour and a half. I'm not even sure whether I'm going to get this tongue finished in an hour and a half, to be honest, but uh, I'll try and go speedy. Um, so, you know, I think I, that's what I'd quite like to do, um, you know, is just sort of draw something... Um, or even if I did something that would take me, a, uh, you know, two weeks to finish off, I think that would be, you know, quite nice, really. You can't find the reference photo. OK, email it. Email me, Caroline, and I'll send it to you. Not a problem. Um, so, um, yeah, so that's that's what I uh, that's what I'm intending to do. Um, OK, so you can see it's looking pretty horrible. Um, you know, and but we're OK with that. And then well, now the other thing I'm going to do, actually, is I'm just going to bring in a tiny bit of you won't have this, but don't 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 panic or anything. Um, no, I'm not going to use that. Actually, I'm just going to use a bit of um, sort of warm grey for but don't don't worry too much. I, what I want to do is I just want to bring in a, a line down the side of the teeth here. Um, So we've got everything there. So I'm just kind of going around there. Okay. So there we go. Um, just so that I know where this this edge bit is here, and then I'm just going to bring in a tiny little bit. See if I can bring in a bit of a highlight at the edge there with my putty eraser. It's amazing these putty erasers look so cumbersome and fat. But um, you can take out quite tiny, tiny details with them. Um, you know, just sort of make these sort of flat edges and it, it's really good at taking out these little tiny details. Have you got another full tutorial like Vinny? Oh, well, maybe we should do... Oh, I ought to try and get something like Slipper, actually. Um, Slipper's got a um, some quite good fur and we could maybe do that on drafting film. Um... The drafting film is quite speedy because you can get all of your texture and everything in with your, your eraser and your slice tool and everything. Um, what you know, and it doesn't matter that much about getting a load of layers in, you know, just because of the nature of the surface, really. So, uh, 
let's have a look at that okay all right so again i'm just kind of um it's almost like i'm sculpting here so i'm just sort of bringing in this area here down here so this is a, a, the area of the tongue that's kind of lifted off and um, i'm just lessening my pressure even more so it's very 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 light and just bringing it down into the um, area of the tongue down here again i'm not being too fussed about um the i've got some like little marks in the pastel mat here which i'm not going to worry about but i'm not too fussed about the texture being absolutely perfectly smooth at this point because I'm going to, um, you know, layer over the top of it and smooth it out. Um, now, what I want to start doing here is with the blue, I want to start kind of making it look as if there's a there's a curve here. So when I bring my pencil in here, I'm not just going to kind of colour it in flat. I'm going to make it as if it's actually curling up and round. So we've got like a... Um, this bit here is lower and it's kind of curving up over the top of the tongue there. So just again, so these round sketchy strokes. And it's quite scary. I mean, this isn't nearly as dark as I need to go, but it is quite scary, you know, going dark on something like this. And especially if you're, um, you know, if you've kind of done most of the commission piece most of the portraits done and then you come to do the tongue and it's like oh um you know so if you're a bit scared of something like this then i would say uh, get the get this get the scary bits in um quickly get them in not quickly but get them in as soon as you can so that they're sort of over and done with and you don't then feel pressured when you come to do them um you know and i think that's why a lot of people do the eyes first because um you know when you're starting out sometimes the eyes can be the thing that um you know if something's going to go wrong and the eyes go wrong and you do them right at the last minute then it's kind of game over really um you know so if you've got something that really scares you um then do that quite soon because um then you're not giving yourself any pressure or anything you know when you've when you've kind of done most of the portrait and you're like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> so again i'm going to bring this blue in over the top of the pink down here um oh i'm teaching you patience <laughs> yeah well that's good lynn <laughs> it's um i think i've taught myself although actually i have always been pretty patient uh, i used to be a typesetter and um, a layout artist um, you know, on the computers and I used to create all sorts of different things. But, um, you know, you really did need patience with that, um, you know, because everything had to be absolutely spot on perfect. Um, you know, so um, and then you had to be patient because as soon as you'd done it, you'd then get the client come in and change their mind. <laughs> so you had to kind of be patient with them as well. But um, yeah, right. OK, so what if you were working on a grey piece of pastel mat, would you have to adjust the colours you're using? No, I wouldn't. No, I'd still use the same colours. Um, I might use, I wouldn't even use white. I might use a little bit more of the cold grey, but I'd still be using the same colours. You'd be amazed, actually, at how the colours show up really nicely on the toned um, papers. I tend to use the dark grey, um, and the colours do tend to sort of show up very, very nicely on there. So I'm just bringing in, there's a couple of sort of like little, little tiny marks, which I'm going to bring in slightly. Um, and actually, I've just remembered on the piece that I did, I bought in a little bit of the ultramarine violet in the on around the bottom bit here. But I'm not going to I haven't chosen those colors for this, so I'm not going to use it. But, you know, if you're seeing some uh, colors uh, in in something and you think, oh, hang on a second, I can see, you know, whatever, whatever, then use it. Even if it's just like a little touch of it, um, you know, definitely use it. It's um, it will it'll all add to it now this is this will probably be um not the same technique that i use not well it's the same technique but it may not be the same colors that i used in exactly the same order for the tongue that i've just done um you know i don't have a sort of a set order of colors or anything like that um but i'm just kind of drawing what what i see um you know and kind of deciding how i'm going to layer the colors as i'm as i'm working through it 
Um, and I think I've kind of talked about um, colour and everything and how I choose colours before. And it, it's 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 weird. And I think it's very, I think it's very, um, it's very tricky to teach somebody about colours because we all see colour in a different way. Our brains um, kind of convert what we see in a different way. Um, and I tend to look at a piece and I'll see I'll see the colours and then what happens is I, I have these colours kind of just flash up in my head and even as I'm talking now colours are flashing up in my head and I'm kind of going through these colours going right well if I use that colour this is going to happen if I use that colour this is going to happen if I use that colour over this this is going to happen and that's the effect I'm going to get so I can kind of um, pick and choose colours in my head and then either either go, yeah, I'm going to go with that or discard it because I've already I've already decided in that split second that, do you know what, if I used a green on this, it's going to look absolutely horrific. <laughs> you know, I mean, th that sort of thing, you know, a colour might pop up and you can think, oh, yeah, do I do I go with that? What do I do if it goes over this? What happens there if I mix it with this colour? And then you can go, yep. Yeah, yeah, definitely going to go with that colour or you can go, yeah, no, that I'm not going to use that colour because it's going to give me completely the wrong effect. And that's how I choose my colours. That's that's how my brain works. It all sort of comes sort of flitting into my head. Um, uh, and everybody works differently. And I know I saw a um, I saw a post today that somebody put on. I think it was on my Facebook group and it was about using the colour pencil picker and, and how it was sort of like a you know, a bit of a light bulb moment, actually, that something like that existed. Um, and I would say, you know, if you're struggling to pick your pencils, then absolutely go for, uh, you know, something like the coloured pencil picker, because it's really going to help you in those early stages. Um, so now then, uh, what size do you normally draw a commission piece? Um, commission pieces I normally draw uh, the smallest is 10 by 12 the one I'm doing at the minute is 11 by 15 I tend to prefer pieces that are um, around sort of 11 by 15 really um, that that's my my preferred size so I sort of work on a half sheet of pastel mat um, if I can this is the pink madder lake that I'm using here and I'm just starting to work this into here a little bit and starting to get a little bit more depth into some of these areas here. Oh, pencil's flying off. Um, hi, Sheila from Calgary. Oh, I love Calgary. Um, I spent, uh, I did a choir tour in Calgary <laughs> when I was at school. Um, is there such a thing as pastel mat board? And if there is, how is it different? Color? Yes, this, this is pastel mat board that I'm using at the moment, Sheila. The difference is that it's thicker. So it's on a backing board of about three millimetres. So it's just it's just thicker. That's all. Um, although I'm saying that's all, although I don't I do tend to find that the pastel mat board is smoother, um, which is a, it's a bit it's a bit annoying, really, because it all should be exactly the same. But I do find it smoother. Um how do you know which colours to use? I find this so... Yeah, Deborah, it, it's, I think... And again, I think, you know, if you struggle with colours, the, pe the pencil pickers can be a really, really good thing to um, to use. Um, and then I think, do you know, I think it's just practice and I think it's working out which colours work for you. Um, you know, because, you, because you'll see colour differently to me uh, and you will like different combinations of colours you know just practicing and using color you'll kind of go oh hang on a second well I, when i did that one the last time i used this combination and that worked really well and i think that's kind of how how it starts to work really hi alexandra <laughs> um okay the color pencil picker only shows the finished color not the underneath layers yeah okay so there's going to be some there's going to be some cons I, I guess to using it um but, you know, when you're when I start to look at, at layering again, that comes, I think, with practice, with um, with using your pencils, with kind of um, understanding how things have worked in the past for you. And, um, you know, I'll know that certain colours work really, really well with other colours. 
and that i guess that's that's why it's a good thing to kind of watch tutorials and stuff like that you know um you know from different artists because you'll see how different artists use the their the, the layering and how they um how they use their color you know and how they build the different colors i mean I, you know i could build a color up like this tongue and use certain pencils and then you could watch another artist do the same tongue but use completely different um pencils but probably come out with a similar it wouldn't be the same style but it would just be a similar color you know so it's it's kind of about um you know how the how the colors work and your experience with them and how you use them so and the only way to kind of get better at color choice is to draw you know to draw as as much as you can um i had a bit of a bit of a hissy fit today because i i i haven't i haven't been drawing as much as i wanted want to be i i've been doing a lot of form filling just recently which is doing my head in um i'm i'm very capable of filling forms in and um but i really hate doing it um and i've had a lot of forming to do and it's been driving me mad um so um yeah i turned all of my uh, all of my um devices to airplane mode this afternoon having had like a, a minor meltdown <laughs> and um yeah and just drew and then i feel so much better it's um it's 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 amazing actually and this is you know another another thing and i think i probably talk about this quite a lot as well is um you know a lot of people um move from colored pencil to pastel because of the slowness because they feel that it's really slow um and it's just that's the reason i love colored pencil because it is really slow um you know so i'm going back to the um cold gray one here and I'm just going to start to work in these sort of lighter areas in here. And you can see it starting to get a little bit smoother. And then what's going to happen is because we've built up a few layers now, we'll be able to start to bring in those little nuances in the shadows. So we can sort of start to slow down a little bit um, and really bring in the, uh, the form of the tongue. So... I can hear my 15 year old son banging around upstairs. Goodness knows what he's doing. So I'm just going to come in. Oops, come in in there. And then um, eventually what I'll do is I'll bring in some of the, um, at the end, the anthraquinoid pink and the white prisma just to kind of really smooth everything off. But just at the moment, I'm just bringing in a little bit of the highlighty bits. Now, um even the the highlighter bits on this tongue are, are still relatively dark so um you know wherever we see highlights don't it's very easy just to go oh that's really white and and it actually it's not it is the, the these highlighter bits are really quite dark um so i'm just going to bring in a little bit in there as well so we can see it's getting nice and smooth not doing an awful lot to the bottom of this bit here and i know it's looking sort of quite bluish but um you know i'm not doing an awful lot to the bottom bit because i want to keep that quite bright um and then i'm going to come in and really darken up this bit here in a second um, and half of the time if you think oh gosh my highlights aren't light enough the best thing to do is go in and darken your um, shadows and then your highlights are then going to stand out a little bit more so I'm just coming back down here. Um, what, we're, what we're wanting to do is we're wanting to make sure there's a, a ridge here where this kind of goes up. We're wanting to kind of bring that ridgy bit in. So I'm going to use the black again now. Um, la la la, colour pencil. Oh, hi, oh, hi Tina. Um, hi, Colleen. Hi from the US. What projector do you use? Laurie, I use the... Um, what was it called artograph is the artograph inspire uh 1000 and very sadly they no longer make it and i don't know why so artograph have, are now part of another company i can't remember what the company's called um but they don't make the digital projectors anymore i don't know whether it's because they're too expensive um but um i th i think you might be able to get a flare an artograph flare uh, and i keep on meaning to sort of 
buy a couple of really cheap projectors and and try them out because I, I have to say they are they are a little bit of a lifesaver um you know for me i don't really like to use transfer paper um you know so even if i was going to draw my own um outline I'd, I'd still need a way of getting it onto the pastel mat and uh, and using the um using a projector it makes everything so much quicker and cleaner um the only issue with a projector is um you've got to get it absolutely bang on square and i don't think i've got this bang on square here um it can look absolutely fine when you project it onto the paper um but then quite often it can end up looking um a little bit skewed a little bit distorted and I think what I've got here is I think everything's just squashed up a little bit. I mean, it is quite a short little roundy tongue. Um, but that's the only thing that I would say with a projector. You've just got to really, really watch, um, you know, is making sure that you've got the um, you've got it absolutely bang on square. And oh, God, I have such fun and games with my projector. I project onto a mirror. on It's on the wall. Um, it's just a big mirror. And I stick my pastel mat onto the mirror. And I project my image onto it and that's all fine. I've got a, it's over the top of the fireplace that I don't use anymore. Um, and the fireplace has got a big stone plinth, which is great. If I stand on the floor, um, the floorboards move. Um, so I can't stand on the actual floor because the floorboards move and the projector moves and then everything kind of goes a little bit wonky and, and out. So I have to stand on this little stone plinth um, and it's not very wide. So and it's probably why my my um, it's probably why my my line drawings are so poor. Um, I want to kind of stand on there and sort of stand to one side and sort of scrunch my arm up and everything and kind of just quickly do the line drawing um, as I'm standing on this tiny bit of um, stone. <laughs> it's not it's not really conducive for a great outline, I have to say. Um, I ought to I ought to find a different way of. Um, a different area to project to and then of course if one of the dogs comes up and starts running around i'm like oh my god and then i want to start the the uh, the line drawing all over again or if Vinny comes bounding in and moves the projector because it's on a on a um it's on a tripod i'm like oh god <laughs> like shouting get the dogs out of here so right and let's just use the um the tongue is more big than the photo. How are you doing? How are you doing to enlarge the tongue? Uh, Nicole, I've, I've just I've just um, uh, I've projected it onto a um, uh, onto my onto my uh, pastel mat. So I've just I've just projected it at the size that I thought I'd draw it. Yeah, I mean, it's n it's not the same size as the tongue in the corner. I've just brought that in so that you can actually see what I'm doing. So so now we've got this little sort of ridgy bit down here. Um, can I just say thanks for taking the time to do this? Oh, that's a pleasure, Deborah. Um, I have to say, I really do enjoy, even though I can't sort of see you or hear you or anything, I really do enjoy doing um, live sessions. Um, I, I, I do like a, an art club on, on my Patreon now every Tuesday. And that, I mean, I've only done two. <laughs> um, but... Um, that I really enjoy that because it, it means that I'm kind of I've got company and I can see people's faces and I can talk to them. And it, I just like to feel like I'm, I've always wanted to be part of something, you know, be part of sort of like a community or something like that. And um, when I do live drawing, I feel part of something. And that that's very important for me to be able to do that. Um, and also the the sort of like the sharing of knowledge and everything that that, again, is a really important thing for me. You know, there's no I, I the, the reason I do and I share stuff is because I, I just like to do that, um, you know, and it, I, I feel. I don't know, that's kind of my it's a very deep rooted value, I think, is the sharing and the, um, you know, the helping. And um, it, I think it's just important for me to sort of, uh, you know, to do that. And so things like this, I mean, some people think about doing a live a live um, session drawing session and it might scare the absolute living daylights out of them um, you know and I've, I've recommended to other artists that they uh, you know that they do some live drawing like oh god no I couldn't um, 
but actually I you know it's something that I really really enjoy doing um I can just sit here I can just chat I can you know tell you about my day talk about what I'm doing and um it's just I just really like it um you know and of course if people don't like you know what I'm doing and everything then they don't need to tune in you know so it's it's I'm hoping that anybody who's actually watching or everybody that's watching actually wants to be here hope, let's hope nobody is here under duress <laughs> being forced to watch me drawing a tongue um so yeah I I just really really enjoy it um right so I'm going to use the dark purple pink I think start to bring a bit of this pinkiness here uh, when I was your son's age, I used to knock a, ton a table tennis ball from the wall to the floor. <laughs> yes, I can imagine Fina. <laughs> he used to do that, actually. He used to have a football upstairs and you could hear him knocking the football around. Um, but uh, he's just, he's, oh, he's coming down the stairs now, I think. You can always, you always tell which one's coming. Down. Oh, no, I think that's my eldest son that's coming down the stairs. So, but... Uh, yeah, so just bring this some of this middle purple pink into here now. Um, and I'm just going to darken off this edge here. So this is quite... Um, oh, that's Vinny moaning. Sounded like a little drill. Vinny's so much better. Um, he's been very, very itchy. And I've been trying all sorts of things to help him. And um, we took him to the vets. I think I mentioned last week. Anyway, he was, he's been on his... Um, antibiotics and steroids um since uh last friday and he's he'll be coming off his steroids shortly but he has not been itching once so his skin's really starting to clear up which is brilliant poor old vincey i think he must have been quite uncomfortable just come back up here as well now we don't, you don't need to worry if you think oh my god it looks so bright um, you don't need to worry about that because you can just tone it back down again. But actually, the edge of this tongue really is quite bright, but you can tone it back down. Um, and I would always say when you kind of get to this this stage here, um, you know, try to kind of go with the the direction of the the grains in the tongue if you can. If you can kind of see how the tongue is working, then sort of go with that. Um, so we're going to be stopping in nine minutes just for the clapping for clapping for carers i do you know i have no idea what's going on in the uk at the moment absolutely no idea um because i don't i don't listen to any news i watch modern family and um and what else do i watch oh i've been listening to outnumbered again um i, oh, I just love sort of like a, a, a sitcom -y type thing um so i've been listening listening to those um looking so oh thank you <laughs> thank you it's looking a bit blue but um you know it's it's kind of even if it's blue it doesn't matter because you can then go over the top and get all of the color and everything in but hopefully this will give you a little bit of confidence as to you know um if you are working on pastel mat how to get the um the sort of the, the these quite vibrant colors actually in a tongue uh, to work and you know if it if it kind of goes all a bit wrong it doesn't matter because you can just you can just layer back over the top of it and it's it's all fine but now now what we're trying to do is just build the form in so we're trying to build in those um uh you know the real um it's kind of sculpting the tongue even more so a little bit more of this dark indigo there is quite a lot of blue in this actually I'm bringing that in there. Uh, are you going to complete the whole picture in one go? Because I think it's going to take ages to complete it. <laughs> Spark of light. Yeah, no, I'm not going to complete the whole picture. Um, I'm, you know, I think we'll, we'll get we'll get pretty far on with the tongue. Um, you know, we, we will get to sort of so it will look um, a little bit more real. But this is this is quite a large area that I'm working on here. But it, it, only because you know. If it was if it was smaller, you wouldn't really be able to see that well what I'm doing. Um, so um, no, I'm not going to go all night. I want to try and finish Casper, and I also wanted to sort of bring in the um, show you those eyes and just kind of just talk to you a little bit about the difference between the um, the three different surfaces. That was a really 
a really really interesting uh this is the cold gray one again that was a really interesting experiment to do actually a really interesting exercise to do that i did on tuesday so i basically drew three eyes the same eye on three different surfaces so i had drafting film i had pastel matte and i had um the hannah Muller nostalgia so a smooth paper and i i didn't draw each eye in one go and then go to the next one i drew sort of like the separate little bits so i drew sort of like the the edge of the eye and then came into the edge of the eye on the pastel matte edge of the eye on the um, on the nostalgia and then back again put the pupil area in and sort of worked like that and it was it was really really interesting how um how it all took shape and how i changed my techniques as i'm moving from surface to surface and I, I, you know i found it really really interesting actually how i automatically change um you know so working on the film to then come into the pastel mat how it's almost like um a, a, just a, a a reaction almost like an instinct as to how how i would change what i do um and somebody pointed out that when i when i cuz i'm obviously talking about what i'm doing and right okay i'm working on the film here blah 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 and <laughs> she said you know as soon as i start talking about the pastel mat my voice changed and it went all sort of gooey <laughs> because i really loved the pastel mat um so that was quite interesting as well to get that feedback but uh, yeah it was quite an interesting i thought it was a good good session actually um i'm hoping everybody enjoyed it um, and then the other quite exciting thing that I've got is I've got I've given a load of paper samples and um, I thought I'd do one art club um, going through these paper samples and looking at how they'd work for coloured pencil. So I've actually got some um, suede board. Um, I've got some uh, metons and I've got some sort of like pastely papers and everything. But I thought that'd be quite useful, actually, um, you know, for... Um, for coloured pencil artists to see the different surfaces and we can like kind of have a bit of a play with them so looking forward to that and then this next month this next week i'm going to be doing um live critiques so and i'm looking forward to that because i do like i do like critiquing um you know i, I love to see people's work so i've just got to be careful here that i don't go i'm probably going to bring in a little bit of the um the prisma into there and then what have i got here pink model lake into here and i might just not put too much in here but bring in some of that anthropoid pink in there so you can see we're getting quite a lot of um information down in here now oh, look at this i think this has been on the floor look um you know lots and lots of layers in there and still not particularly pretty um you know but um you don't need to worry so let's uh, let's just come into here get a little bit more pink in here and we need to get that up there darker what i'll do is i'll just do sort of like a distract you for a moment and then just you know bring my portrait that i've already done with the tongue done i'll just bring it in and say oh i've done it now it's finished <laughs> um uh, Wendy the new puppy is amazing she's absolutely gorgeous honestly she's gorgeous she's fabulous we thought we'd struck gold with slipper um you know and and Nelly is just absolutely fabulous and she and Vinny play brilliantly they just love each other so um that's a bonus but they my god they they just bounce off all of the furniture and the walls and they're just they're crazy <laughs> But she's um, she's a really really lovely little dog. So and she's she's kind of settled into a good routine as well. So she's um, she'll come into the studio with the others and she'll just lie and you know sleep and um, got to be really careful when I move my chair around because she tends to sort of she'll start somewhere and then move, and then she'll have like her ears right in the in line of my um, of the casters on my chair. So I've got to be really careful not to run anything over. Okay, so again, I'm working quite fast here. So we've got two minutes to go before the um, <laughs> that's Vinny again before the uh, clapping for carers. So um, I'll put my put my pencil down for a minute and just um, let everybody um, 
you know, who wants to clap, clap. Um, I think the clapping, I love all the sounds of... No, Katie, it's uh, clapping for carers, I think. Um, I think they're still clapping for carers. Um, oh, have they finished the clapping now? I don't know. Let me know, let me know, um, let me know, Vicky, if the clapping has finished. Um, so I think we need to... Do, do, do. Okay. <laughs> it stopped last... Oh, so it has stopped. Right, okay. I thought I thought we were doing the, um, the clapping for... Um, the clapping for carers, but if it's stopped, let me know, Vicky, and then we don't need to do that. So I have no idea. Oh, there's some rude comments, oh dear. Uh, uh, people are so silly, aren't they? I don't get to see those, so it doesn't matter. But uh, yeah, I wonder what sort of people, I wonder why people do that. Um, you know, feel, feel the need to kind of do that sort of stuff. It's beyond me, but uh, hey, hey. They must have some some something going on in their lives that they feel they need to do that. It's finished. It's finished here. Um, right. OK, so it's finished. All right, then. OK, so we won't. We can still do it if they're working. Um, I think I don't think I think everybody says it's um, it's stopped. So I'll, I'll carry on. But if you want to clap, then clap. Um, so I'll just carry on. Carry on drawing. Um, yeah, it's funny, isn't it? How people feel the need to kind of put, put you know, join in on something and then be really rude <laughs> it's just me on me um and actually it, that that's quite a good subject to talk about actually especially if you're an artist because um you you know if you put yourself out there and you have your um you've got your art page and everything sadly you get a lot of people who feel that they can come onto your art page and um and say stuff to you and critique your work and be rude um and uh, it can be really, really, really disheartening and you can really take it personally. And the best thing to do is to um, is to ignore, is never, ever, ever get into an argument with anybody, uh, you know, on your page ever. Um, because, well, it, it can kind of start to um, well, you can you can kind of end up in a massive argument, and then that's that's not particularly it's not great for you because you you know you need to keep stay professional and everything. But um, it, you know it you, it can make you feel even worse. And the best thing to do is just to completely ignore w whatever they're doing, delete the message, um, and then remember that it's never when somebody puts something rude or nasty or whatever on your page. You have to remember that it's never about you ever it's never ever about you it's always about that other person um you know you, you'll find some some people will kind of make i, I don't know I, I don't know i don't know why people do it i don't know but you know it's it's always about them so you know if you're finding that people are coming on and critiquing your work and all of that type of stuff with you know with unwanted or they're rude or whatever just ignore and know that it's not you it is all about them um, and you can block people as well and it, I just think it's the best thing to do we do not need any of that rubbish and whatever that um, that some people feel the need to be able to you know to do I don't get it I don't get it at all um, you know it's just a it's, it's yeah so um, so I have no idea what was going on there because I didn't um, I didn't see it all um back to oh right okay that happened to me on instagram i just said thank you <laughs> it's the best thing jane the best thing to do is just to stay polite um you know and have a have a rant on your own and everything and you know that's absolutely fine but do, you know don't get involved with somebody who's going to be start being silly you know it's um there's a there's a lot of a lot of people out there who are you know you get the backhanded compliments as well or you get the people who are clearly on an agenda that are just trying to wind you up and you know those those sorts of people you're just better off ignoring or or just blocking um you know so um yeah it's people are funny aren't they as they say in yorkshire there's not so queer as folk said in an un yorkshire accent <laughs> even though i am yorkshire um you know born and bred but uh yeah 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start to bring in a little bit of the um, the anthracnoid pink. Um, is there anyone who has the courage to critique your work, Bonnie? It has never happened to me, but I would be very hurt. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I have I have quite a few people who um, I've, I've had quite a few people who's kind of comment and say this, that, and the other. And, and actually, do you know if if um, if they give me feedback that I can work on, so if they say, oh, you know, brilliant, blah, 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 um, but if you just did this, that, and the other, then um, I, if it's done in good grace and that person is a, you know, is an artist and they're producing good work, then do you know what? I'll listen to it. If somebody just comes on to my, something that I've drawn and goes, eyes are too big or whatever, uh, or that's rubbish <laughs> that's not critique that that is never critique that is just somebody who's got a um you know who's feeling probably feeling i don't know um not particularly confident about their own work and they just want to kind of blame you know put it onto somebody else but um um yeah i do have i do have um you know a few people who will sort of say stuff and it and it does hurt of course it hurts because you haven't asked for it um and um you know, if you don't ask for critique, you shouldn't really ever get it. But uh, but some people do feel the need to, to do it. And and it's it's about them. So. Um, it's when people lack talent, so they try to get noticed. Yeah. Uh, how come the tongue I've drawn bears no resemblance to yours? Um, well, Deborah, you're you're very welcome to email it to me, and I can um, not right now because I won't be able to look at it. But afterwards, I can have a look at it for you, and um, you know. But I would say that I know I'm working quite fast, and obviously, um, this is the second time I've drawn this tongue, <laughs> so you know, I, I, it kind of feels a little bit familiar. It's almost like doing your. Um, your uh, visualization I, i've kind of already i've already done the visualization because i've already drawn it but um so i'm using the prisma white here and this is fabulous i have to say is fabulous for getting that real smoothness over the top you know really really smoothing everything out and i hadn't anticipated when i was drawing this um the tongue on the portrait i hadn't actually anticipated um using the white prisma and then I was just finding that everything was still looking a little bit grainy, a little bit sort of um, textured. And I just thought, oh, do you know what? I wonder if I use the Prisma to see what happens. So I kind of dug my white Prisma out. And um, yeah, and it's 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 worked really well, nicely, actually. It's waxy. Um, you know, so you're going to get that smoothness. It's going to bring all of your layers together a little bit, a little bit better. Um, and um, again, I'm not using it really hard. I'm using quite light pressure here. Um, so I'm just going to bring in a little bit up there as well. The only thing I'd say is if you're using the white prisma kind of in the dark areas, it may well go a little bit grainy um, for you afterwards if you start to put in the, the darker colours afterwards. But um, it's uh, it's it's yeah it's a good pencil oh thank you so much fairy uh, fairy <laughs> uh, mary that's really kind of you um uh, don't be disheartened by this read yeah well you know it, it's it, it happens with everything doesn't it you know and and you you can't you can't you can't get upset by it um big yeah so um it's, it's just another of those things in it isn't it that you just have to kind of put up with and another thing we say in yorkshire those that matter don't mind and those that mind don't matter of course mind the yes uh, is the white prisma color just about the only one of the set you usually use bonnie yes it is actually um i i don't really use the prismas and yet i've got a full set of them and i th i think they're gr i think they're great pencils i really do think they're great pencils and i have used them in the past um the thing with Prismas is that they have got some amazing colours. I mean, some really, really good colours. The colours that you wish the other brands would have and don't, um, you know, sort of like the beigey colours and the sort of the pinks and everything. They've got some really, really, really good colours. Um, but the the white, I think, is is a particularly good one. Um, 
you know, for stuff like this. I wouldn't, I wouldn't tend to use this on things like eyes or leather or, you know, anything like that, unless I was kind of getting into difficulties. I tend to just stick with the, the other brands just because I'm, I'm more familiar with those and I'm, I'm happy with, with what I'm doing. Um, but it was just, um, I was kind of struggling, I guess, a little bit with the grain on this tongue and wanted it smoother. And that's why I sort of chose to, to bring in the, um, the Prisma. So now what I'm going to use is something a little bit weird. Um, oh, here we go. And it's the, um, how do you tone down the pink? So the pink, good question. I'm going to use the apricot. Um, and I would also tone down the pink with the um, with the white and I would tone down the pink with the uh, cold grey one. Um, so Bonnie one to use white Prisma versus white Museum Aquarelle versus what? Um, I think because the Prisma, so I've got a white Museum Aquarelle here again. So this is the white museum. So the white museum is actually going to give you a whiter white, I feel. It's actually going to give you a, um, a, a much lighter uh, look. Um, now, for me here, I'm getting sort of more of a liney feel, whereas when I'm using the Prisma on this, um, it, I'm kind of getting more of a, it's blending it more rather than actually putting the pigment on the paper. And that's kind of the, the look that I was going for. Whereas if I was doing eyes, like cat eyes or something like that, I'd I'd probably prefer to use the museum over the over the Prisma. But, you know, um, it's kind of, I suppose it's, it's a bit six and two threes, really. Um, so I use the um, apricot and I put the apricot down into sort of like in these areas down here where we've got sort of like a little bit of the, it's almost like the light's shining through. And we've got just sort of a little bit in here. This is looking a bit blue, really, but I'm going to bring some of the anthropomoid pink in. Um, and I'm just going to bring in a touch of this into here as well. And then I'm going to use the anthropomoid pink. The, so these are the, um, the luminance colours, and it is going to go in over the top of the, uh, the prisma. Um, and this should hopefully just pink up some of these areas that maybe went a little bit blue. So this is a really, really bright pink, um, but it's uh, very, very nicely going in over the top of. And I can start to bring in a few of these little sort of nuances in there as well. So I'm just getting a look a bit more pinky in there. And then this area as well. So you can see the pastel mat takes so many layers if you need it to. And in, in an instance like this, where you're kind of, you're really wanting to build those colors and everything on the tongue, the, um, you know, the ability to keep layering is brilliant. Now I would not use as many layers as this on all the parts of the animal that I'm drawing, you know, because there's just no need. But on this tongue, we do need to actually build the layers in because we need to build that depth and we need to build that color in. So the, the layering um, capability in the pastel mat is really, really important here. So um, you are amazing body. Oh, thank you so much. That's so sweet. Plus there is something about your voice that is comforting. Ah, oh, when I'm not shouting and screaming at my children and my dogs. I save all of my nice, calm voice for you guys. <laughs> so... Uh, um but yeah yeah this is this is not looking so bad actually this is looking okay um this anthropoid pink is um again this is quite a good one um i want to bring in a little bit more white down there um but i'm hoping that this is sort of um, i know it's looking very bluey at the moment i want to maybe uh, counteract that with something but um it is quite bluey it is quite dark in the um you know in those area bits but uh, I've been told by Pencil Fire you can't buy Prisma singly in the UK, only in sets as they're American. Kay, if you go to um, the lovely Emma Kerridge at the Coloured Pencil Shop, you can buy uh, single pencils of the Prismas because that's where I buy my from, from Emma. It's Emma Kerridge, Coloured Pencil Shop. Um, she is amazing. 
um, and uh, I would highly, highly recommend that you um, you use her. You can even, you know, she ships globally. So if you need to buy sort of single colored pencils, you can um, you can buy globe you can buy from her, and then she'll ship all over the world. So, and she's a very knowledgeable um, artist. She's a, she's an artist, very knowledgeable of, knowledgeable about her colored pencils, and, and a really lovely girl. Um, so I would I would definitely definitely recommend Emma. So um, okay, so just pinking these little bits up again, pinking this bit up here again a bit actually. In fact, I might use the darker pink there. Um, heard another artist say Karen Dash White works fabulous. Yep, yeah. absolutely. Anything that's going to be sort of like that little bit softer is going to work well. So I'm just going to bring in that. And you can see that the pink, it still is, you're still seeing this colour coming in. You know, I'm putting this pink in and you're still seeing it. Um, you know, it's not kind of just a sludge. Um what's the difference between luminous and pa luminance and pablo um they feel very different so the pablo is more it's more sort of um i'd say it's more chalky but that doesn't that doesn't really do it justice it's a, it's quite a soft pencil um but it's like a it's velvety it feels velvety when it goes down whereas the luminance are softer and feel i guess a little bit more um buttery if that makes sense um didn't catch that what color pink is that please susan the, i'm using the this is the pink madder lake and then i'm using the middle purple pink um all of us mums have the voice that only our children will yeah i know <laughs> and i guess if you're the same as me you've got a selective hearing as well so you can kind of switch off your children's voices as well <laughs> i do that all of the time and they're like mom i've been shouting for you for like 10 minutes I'm like, oh i didn't hear you i'm so sorry um so I'm just gonna so when you get to this bit here where I'm kind of putting some of this purple in the in here and we're getting a little bit of weird um sort of uh texture coming in um you know don't don't panic if something like that happens because you can again you can just sort of start to very gently with that prisma I can just smooth that out a little bit um and that works quite nicely so again, the prisma I'm using to smooth out, I'm using very, very light pressure here. I'm not burnishing. I'm just using it over the top of everything to kind of just move all of that pigment together. Um, it's a bit colourful, this one. I'm just going to lighten up down here a bit. So I'm going to use a little bit harder pressure just to lighten up down here. it's not the best tongue in the whole world but you know it kind of shows you how how i would create it um may may even want to bring in something like a, um you know like a cold gray two or a cold gray three as well you know if you wanted to um sort of bring in a little bit lighter in there um and then i think i'm going to bring in a bit more of that black Oh, in fact, actually, I'm not, and you probably won't have one of these with you, but I'm going to use the, um, if I can find it, the um, Caput Morton Violet, and this should just counteract that blue a little bit. Just get that darkness in there, but just not quite as blue. And this is, this is how I'll work all of the time. I'll put colour in and I'll go, oh, gosh, right, okay, so that's not working as well as I'd hoped. What colour can I put in just to sort of um, counteract, um, you know, that that in there? Um, again, very, very light pressure in there. And then this bit here is sort of like a ridgy bit. Um, ba -dum -ba -bum. You never thought you'd say it, but that dog tongue looks lovely. Thank you so much, Susan. <laughs> Uh, Mary, I'm using a mixture of um, luminance po and polychromos and then I'm using the white prisma. Um, so I tend to, I really do like the, the, the polychromos because they're, um, they're, they're quite translucent so you can kind of see through the layers. Whereas when you start to use the luminance, they're much more, um, you know, they, they, you, you, can, you kind of, 
kind of can't they cover very very well so you can't sometimes you can't always see what's underneath they do cover very well i'm going to put a little bit more pink into this down here because that's gone a bit bit of a weird color so i'll just put a bit more pink into there um and then oh apparently the colored pencil shop are out of stock of the white prisma and no i haven't bought them all just in case you're thinking that <laughs> i think i bought all of the uh, granite rose but no i haven't bought all of the um the white prismas i promise okay so yeah, that's not looking so bad i'm just going to bring a little bit more um in just into here just so we get a little bit more of a a lightness in there and this is kind of where all of the messing around and the to and fro in and adding that little bit of extra layers and all of that type of thing comes in because what we're trying to do is we're trying to get that feeling of um, 3D-ness, um, if that's a word, into the tongue. You know, so we want it to look like it's uh, sort of sitting in there. It's not quite as pink as I'd hoped, but I don't think it really matters. Just bring a bit of this middle purple pink back in here. And this is where you just, you know, you do, you can just spend a couple of hours really just tweaking and adding and, you know, getting it to look a little bit more tongue-like. So I'm going to put this to one side in a second and um, just start, just uh, show you those three eyes uh, that I did on Tuesday and just kind of go through uh, the difference in what I've been doing and the difference in the different um, surfaces. So I'm just bringing this in here as well. And we've got a few little sort of speckles in the pastel mat as well, which I can I can come in at the end. Once I'm happy with everything, I can come in at the end and just kind of scrub in harder um, with my um, with my pencils. Okay, so again, just very very gently, just bring that prisma in over the top. Um, actually this isn't looking so bad this is looking all right it's it is a bit out of context because you haven't got the rest of the um, the dog in there which is you know it's always a little bit um in fact what i can do is i can bring my uh, i can bring my um the tu the portrait that I've, I've nearly finished i can show you that actually and then you can sort of see uh how I've done that. So I'm just going to grab that very quickly and show you him. Yeah, so I think it's oh no, it's not bad. It's not bad at all actually. It's pretty pretty similar. If I just bring in the um, this is the one this is one that I did earlier. <laughs> uh, so I'm just going to bring that up there. I'm just going to stick him on there. And just, oops, just get that in focus. Yay. Yeah, hopefully he's in focus there. So I've just started working on the um, on the collar here, um, which I was I was I must admit I was dreading actually. I still need to do to do some work, but I've been working on this area and this area. And I just need to do this bottom bit down here. Um, but you can see how his tongue has kind of, um, you know. It's worked quite nicely, but this tongue here is much, much smaller than what I've been drawing today. So, um, but I've I've really, really, really enjoyed this. The, the board has kind of popped up. You can see it kind of a, a bend on it, but I've really, really enjoyed drawing this boy. Really enjoyed drawing him. Um, and I've used a, a, a few different, um, I've used a few different techniques as well, actually, on this one. Um, I'm using my luminance an awful lot more uh, so I'm I'm putting sort of like a base of the I've used the brown ochre ten percent so this one I've used the base of this kind of in here kind of try to draw in almost like the the hairlines and everything and then I've worked in over the top of that with my studios um, my studios and my light fast and it's and it's worked really really nicely um, you know so I'm using my luminance an awful lot more. Um, 
and and it's it's yeah it's worked very well actually i've 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 really i'm really enjoying drawing him so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to bring in the um the three eyes just to very quickly sort of show you hopefully you can see those i'm just going to uh, just take that to the top there just take them in a little bit more so you can sort of see them um, So what we can see here is we've got the um, we've got the drafting film at the top here. So this is the drafting film. Um, this is the pastel mat, and this is the Hannah Muller nostalgia. And um, what I did when I did the the art club in the the live drawing, I kind of um, I sort of put these the areas in one one at a time. And what I found really interesting, actually, with the film and with the nostalgia is that when I was putting these black bits in here, it was very much a case of sort of stroke, 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 you know, very clean, single stroke lines. And the same with the nostalgia. I found that that got me a better coverage overall, whereas when I came to do it with the pastel mat, I tended to do that kind of backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, little jiggy lines. Um, so that that was one uh, technique that that you know was completely different um, and then I found with this with the film I really needed to be careful when I was bringing in these sort of um, the, the middle of the eye these are nowhere near finished I mean this is just you know um, I'd need to spend a, an awful lot more time working on these but um, you know I had to be very very careful when I was bringing the, the color into here because with film uh, your color You've got to be really careful that your pencil strokes are even because you've got to get that even surface straight away. With the pastel mat, it um, it's it you can move the pigment around, you know, so you don't have to be really careful about where it goes. And actually, I found with the Hannah Muller, uh, I found I ended up with a very similar result with the Hannah Muller than I do with the um, similar to the pastel mat, which I found really quite interesting because it is a smooth paper. Um, and actually, funnily enough, you can see more grain, and more tooth coming through on the smooth paper than you can on the pastel mat, which I found quite interesting as well. So, um, so yeah, that was that was a really, really interesting, um, really interesting exercise to do. Um, and I'd like to do some more of these as well to kind of, you know, maybe do some leather, uh, see how leather works on all three surfaces as well. So I thought that that was that was pretty pretty interesting to do actually um and uh let's have a look hi bonnie can you upload send me the ref pit for the spaniel uh i have it transferred onto pastel mat for some reason can't find the rest alexandra i will do but you'll have to email me because i i'll forget um i'm so forgetful <laughs> so send me an email and i'll do that for you um so um yeah so that th that was quite an interesting um thing and that's kind of what i'm doing on my on my art club each week is doing these doing these different different things so that that was interesting and then we'll just bring this tongue back again um and sort of compare it slightly with the um with casper's actual portrait Maybe we can see oh yeah we can see both of those so actually um you know it's a lot smaller if you can just see that poking in there just do that there um you can see it's a lot smaller but it's looking looking pretty similar what i need to do now for this is i need to work on um i need to work on this area here down here, I need to get this much, much lighter um, and smoother in here. And this area here, I need a lot, a lot lighter as well. But actually, um, the the colour wise uh, isn't bad at all. You know, I've got it. I've got it a very similar colour to my to my portrait. So, um, you know, not not bad at all. And it is it is sort of like double size, really. Um, Jane. Oh, that's brilliant. Oh, I'm really pleased. Do share it, Jane, won't you? Do do let us see it on Facebook. Um, yeah, so um, I hope that's been useful for you um, tonight. I know I've really enjoyed it, and I'm going to crack on with Casper now and try and get him get him all finished. 
um, blooming past on that board. It's a bit of a bit of a nightmare. But yes, this lovely, this lovely, lovely boy. Try and get him all finished. Um, and um, I'm thinking next week we will we'll work on the spaniel nose. Deborah, yeah, it's it's part of my, it's a, oh, so it's part of my it's my uh twenty dollar tier my the Patreon one, it's a the twenty dollar tier, and I I've kind of capped it at a at a. Uh, it, it, sort of like at a level because I want to be able because I do a critique each month uh, via like a video link so I critique it, critique, critique people's work and put it on a video and then they can watch it back and I want to make sure that I give people uh, what they're what they're paying for I want to give them value for money basically so I'm a, I'm I'm a little bit loath to open up too many places because a I won't be able to cope with the amount of critiques that I want to do um you know and and b i want to kind of keep it keep it special but i am considering putting another few places in there um and the art club is 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 for that tier and it is um it's every tuesday that i do it um you know and we did a we did a framing one and i invited my framers in to come and um chat about framing and um uh, I've got some other special guests that are coming on as well. So it's it's really, really nice. But um, it's the critique side of stuff that I worry about because I want to I want to make sure that anybody who sends their critique in, they get it. You know, and I don't want to be doing sort of like a rushed critique. I want to be able to kind of take my time. So um, I hope that was all um, all OK for you. I will uh, I'll just put I'll just put the lovely Casper to one side so he can rock off. Uh, I will say. I will say goodbye uh, for this week. Thank you all for joining me and I will um, hopefully catch you all next week. See you later.